When multiplying functions, we should recognize that f times g of x is the same as f of x times g of x. Not confusing f of x to be multiplication or g of x to be multiplication, but that the functions themselves are being multiplied together. With a number, we will evaluate both then multiply. The result with a variable, we will multiply the two functions together. Don't forget to use parentheses. In example one, we have f of x is equal to x minus four and g of x, which is equal to x squared minus six x plus eight. Find f times g of negative two. In example one, we have a variable substituted with an actual number and so with a number, we will evaluate both and then multiply the results. So f of negative two is equal to negative two minus four or negative six. G of x is now g of negative two and we'll evaluate that one as well. This again comes out to be four plus twelve plus eight or twenty-four. So I've found my two function values. From here, I'm asked to find f times g of negative two. This means we need to take negative six and multiply it to positive twenty-four. Negative six times positive twenty-four is negative one forty-four. So f times g of negative two is equal to negative one forty-four. In example two, we see that we have a variable instead of a number. When we have this situation, it's easier to multiply the two functions together. So x squared minus five x multiplied to x minus five. Recall that in the very definition of a multiplying of functions, f of x times g of x is the same as f times g of x and that's why I can just rewrite this as f of x times g of x is equal to this. Foiling, we get x to the third minus five x squared minus five x squared plus twenty five x. Combining like terms, we get x to the third minus ten x squared plus twenty-five x. Since I can't simplify this any further because there are no more like terms, this is my answer to f times g of x.